Hello and welcome to That Deacon on YouTube. About a week ago, I attended a one-day conference held at Bloy House, ETSC, the Episcopal School of Theology at Claremont. It was put on by the dean of the seminary, Sylvia Sweeney, and our own archdeacon, Joanne Leslie, along with other deacons in our diocese. It was entitled The Diaconia of All Believers, which really covers all baptized individuals because at our baptism, we are charged to seek and serve all persons in Christ. The day before the conference, I was able to get some time with Suzanne Watson Epting, our keynote speaker uh, for the conference, uh, asking her a few questions about the diaconate and the conference. The first question I asked her was what she hoped people might take away from the conference. One of the things that I'm especially pleased about is that we have a lot of uh, participants that represent the different orders in our church. And so I hope that one of the things that we can take away together is the way in which we uh, enrich each other, the ways in which we're all called to diaconal ministry, but that those of us who are deacons have been asked to look primarily through a diaconal lens. So that um, in our interactions, I hope that we're able to blend our various perspectives and enrich each other around that particular call that God extends at baptism um, to be engaged in loving service. Last summer, Suzanne Watson Epting uh, published a book entitled Unexpected Consequences, The Renewal of the Diaconate. So I asked her what connection this book might have with her presentation the next day. Uh, really, a lot of my remarks will have to do with things that I do cover in that book, because I think that the recent history of the diaconate really contains uh, a great deal of history about our prayer book currently as well, and the idea that if praying shapes believing both our baptismal covenant and this new vision of the diaconate um, are really interlinked in some very, very deep ways. So um, there really is quite a summary of the history that I cover in Unexpected Consequences, but also the idea that we really can build on that, that the diaconate itself or the diaconate of all believers, however we choose to look at it through our particular lens, um, is not a static thing, and that the church has asked to grow and change all the time. So hopefully through that history I'll be able to show the adaptability and the sense of uh, contextual uh, theology that's important to the diaconate, and that there is a lot to build on still for the future. Since our conference took place the first weekend after the general election, I asked her how the diaconate might help people who might be having trouble coping with the results of this election. Here's what she had to say. One of the things that I talk about in the book and that I feel very deeply is that the interpretive role of the deacon was one that was a little slow in emerging and uh, at the same time, it's one of the unexpected consequences that has become very, very important to our identity and I think to who we are in the church and who we are together. Interpreters don't just translate one word from one language into another word to an, in another language. They actually interpret what's underneath. And if ever we needed people to help us interpret what's going on, I think that the skills that are related to that, whether they have to do with advocacy, whether they have to do with facilitating dialogue, whether they have to do with ongoing theological reflection, all are ways in which we can come to interpret for and with each other in better ways and maybe begin to build some of that common ground that we haven't been as effective in building as we might have. After my interview a little bit later in the day, we met for dinner. 
as you can see us pictured here. In the picture is Dr. Sylvia Sweeney, the Dean of Bloy House, Suzanne Watson Epting, uh, Jamie Hammonds, one of our deacons in the diocese, uh, our archdeacon, Joanne Leslie, and myself, and Catherine Wagger, another deacon who helped present the conference, is taking the picture. So we had a great time. It was fun-filled, sharing stories of our ministries and other things that uh, were of importance to us at that time. It was just a fun dinner. So the next day, everyone met in front of the chapel on the campus of the Claremont School of Theology, which houses Bloy House ETSC. And as you can see, uh, it, the, the conference was well attended. After everyone had checked in and picked their breakout uh, workshops, we all got together inside the chapel uh, for morning prayer and a little bit of singing. There were people here from uh, all across California. There might have been some people from out of state. I didn't come in contact with them, but uh, there were priests, deacons, uh, deacons and priests in formation, lay people, and a few deacons from the north of us uh, in the Diocese of San Joaquin from all the way up to the Diocese of California in Northern California. When we were all settled and welcomed, Suzanne Watson Epting gave her keynote address. was exploring the history of the modern diaconate and its implications for our future. We've also seen that this is about the diaconate of all believers. The keynote address was really an overview of the diaconate, but more importantly, how our baptismal rite and our covenant, our baptismal covenant, really helped shape and form the modern day diaconate that we all know. The one thing that I remember from the talk uh, was something that Suzanne shared about the deacon being an icon of service. It's not the deacon necessarily who does the service, but we embody the whole concept and the gift of service to others. After lunch, there were two workshop sessions. Uh, you could choose one from four at each of these two workshops. Uh, the workshop I descend, uh, decided to take in workshop one was Yeast for the Dough, Deacons as a Ministry Catalyst. And what this workshop was, was informational. Uh, it was ways in which churches can partner either with other churches or other organizations to serve others out in their community around their church. Uh, there were two standout uh, ministries that I thought were very interesting when people can collaborate. Uh, one was uh, presented by the priest in charge and the deacon from All Saints Church Highland Park. Highland Park is an, a section of Los Angeles that is economically challenged. And in that area, as many areas uh, in and around an urban environment, uh, are a number of homeless. So what All Saints decided to do was to open up their church as a winter shelter. It's a program where homeless people come in in the evening and they actually sleep in the pews. They are fed and they have a place to stay that is warm and covered and sheltered. And then in the mornings 
they leave the church uh, around, I think they told me, between 6.30 and 7 o'clock. So this is a ministry that is secular and a ministry that is of the church, let's say sacred, partnering together to help other individuals. The other program I thought, which was very good, was entitled Café del Rey. And this is done by St. Philip's Church uh, in Los Angeles. Uh, the cafe meal includes a hot entree, rice or pasta, salad, or fresh fruit. Um, this is done in collaboration with St. Mark's Glendale and St. Philip's uh, downtown. The thing is, that particular area, St. Philip's, where they hold this cafe, is probably one of the poorest neighborhoods in Los Angeles. And the neat thing is they open up the church to everyone. Anyone who shows up is fed in a restaurant style uh, program. Uh, it's like a little cafe. And again, it's two different churches getting together to provide this service. So ministry partnership um, was the catalyst of this. Of course, we heard about Laundry Love. I'm involved in a partnership with St. Mark's as we do Laundry Love. So it's really ways in which churches can work with the community and each other to serve others. Thank you very much for viewing this month. And I hope for those of you in the United States, you have a very blessed and beautiful Thanksgiving. And I'll see you next month on That Deacon on YouTube. Bye-bye. God bless.